Hello, beautiful souls. I am going to bring you the seventh ray of ritual, order, and ceremony. It's associated with Archangel Zadkiel. And there's a lot to get into. So let me get into it. I'm really trying to keep my videos under 45 minutes now. Uh, nobody has time. So let's dig in. Archangel Zadkiel vibrates the color purple. Crystals associated with Archangel Zadkiel are lapis lazuli and azurite. Archangel Zadkiel is the Archangel of Freedom and the Angel of Creator's Righteous Grace, Mercy, and Patron Saint of All Who Forgive. According to Jewish and Christian traditions, Zadkiel is the Angel of Mercy known to have stopped Abraham from sacrificing his son, Isaac. Zadkiel's wisdom offers tools to release our guilt, remorse, or attachment to them. By connecting with Zadkiel, one can strengthen their connection to creator to explore the concepts of mercy, forgiveness, through surrender. Once the first step forward to healing is made, one can move forward with healthier practices for the mind, body, and soul. With the gift of the seventh ray enters your vortex. Something new is being formed, something that will benefit your world. Now, your world could be like your circle, your world. It could be your community. It could be your family. It could be the world. I don't know. There may be an increased interest in magic, ceremony, and ritual for healing purposes. Let me say that one more time. There may be an increased interest in magic, ceremony, and ritual for healing purposes. This has nothing to do with what the dark inverts and does in forms of rituals and ceremonies and all of that. Nothing. Resonating with high frequency violet light and the Archangel Zadkiel, the seventh ray also helps transmute energy from lower to higher frequency. It is a spiritual cleansing agent that allows the truth of spiritual freedom empowerment and choice to be seen and felt restoring hope joy to the heart and be honest living in this world it's hard sometimes to remain hopeful and finding joy so definitely have room for that the mass of judgment our words without respect to context runs rampant in our society there's definitely good, benevolent, and service to source creator and the greater good of humanity, rituals, ceremonies, and magic. We are energy alchemists. We transmute and transform dark to light, unhealthy to healthy, negative to positive, all day, every day. And we are always in service to the light, working with the archangels for the greater good of humanity. We make sure of that. The seventh ray is very active upon the earth at this time. All of humanity is being affected by it. The seventh ray is the push pull between the old and the new. The life that has been and can no longer continue in that form and the new life that wants to evolve from the old. Transcending the lower dimension leaves the old form and ways behind. And that definitely requires shadow work. It honors traditions and ancestral wisdom that serve new life with the seventh ray enters your vortex. You are asked to balance your attachment to what has been with an openness to the new. It is a time to fearlessly question what has been, honor what continues to hold value for you and dismiss what no longer serves you. This is the actual mechanics of shadow work. When you go through doing your spiritual inventory, you will determine what was I taught to do that serves me absolutely no positive benefit? What do I long to do that serves my soul? And where is the balance in between? Doing the shadow work involved with that. This is what I call life inventory. The way I did this initially was with a list of two columns, needs versus wants. Later, I discovered how easily beings lost their soul. And it was shocking that it was actually done usually very innocently. 
Uh, prime example, you have a, a very ill family member uh, or they were in a really bad accident. You're in the hospital and you're in ICU. They're in ICU and you're begging for them to be saved and you will take their place. I'll give anything, just let them live. I guarantee you, it is not only the divine that hears that. <clears throat> now my inventory has a couple more criteria besides just needs and wants. Now it says, do they have a soul? Are they of the light? Are they in alignment to source creator? And then when I get through all of that, is it in my highest and best good to engage with them? What no longer serves me today gets let go of with LFG, love, forgiveness, and gratitude. Cords are cut, attachments sealed and healed on both ends. The seventh ray also creates form from invisible, intangible spiritual energy. These are the inspired solutions and synchronicities that seem to come out of nowhere that are signs that the divine is working in your vortex. We've all had that. And you may want to reason it away or other people around you are trying to reason it away. But you could also accept the blessing that it is. The seventh ray brings an alignment with the divine and more, the more you are willing to invoke and allow that energy to bless you, the more your life will align itself with genius of creativity Solutions and loving opportunities and the universe wants to bring them all to your world. This is what we mean when we say the universe will reward you for fully aligning to the divine. The more we detach from the old and declutter our physical space and our mental space, the more we make room for the divine to bless us. The gifts of ritual order and ceremony are always to attract this energy. Conscious ceremony done in service to unconditional divine love leads, feeds a need for sac sacred embodiment. It is a hunger within the soul that many seek to feed through religion and others through less conscious rituals of addiction. Ritual can be something that keeps you stuck or it can open up new avenues to spiritual evolution got good and bad light and dark positive and negative can and do exist in all things there is not one subgroup or umbrella group or religion that is all good and no bad or all bad and no good there is a mix of that in all things the ritual orders and ceremonies that serve the divine are loving, nurturing, nurturing, and soul inspiring life force of the divine energy. We use our discernment. That's how we navigate through the ascension. And we must reconcile the truth from what we thought we knew, what we were taught to know, and what truth is coming from within what is resonating as truth now. And you absolutely know, nope, this is right. This feels right. This is right. This is an alignment. This will involve many ego checks. When you have these light bulb moments and many of these docs start to get connected for you, the truth can feel like a gut punch. But in many ways, it also is a release. It is a release from the burden of what you thought was true. This allows soul growth, soul expansion. And the inevitable is, is that you take in more information than anyone ever wanted you to have. And from that, you have the capacity to lock in your soul path. Those that resist the truth have disbelief based or false narratives popular opinion, foundational lies are going to deal with a lot more ego issues and their chakras are going to contract. They're going to close and they're going to block because the inner energy within you, the soul spirit resonance within you is in conflict to what the ego is pushing you toward. 
Choosing a spiritual practice to engage in on a regular basis, creating your own spiritual system will help you call the genius of the seventh ray into your life. Your spiritual practice might be that a daily prayer followed by a short conscious dance, maybe yoga, maybe meditation, a walk out in nature, or some combination of these. Find what works for you and do it. Commit to doing it regularly. Make it a priority. You can invite spirit into your life through simple and ordered system that you do and you choose what works for your soul on a regular basis, even if it's only five minutes a day. Then the new life, the new you, the real you finds its way through the mud and the muck and you emerge as the beautiful lotus flower. I often correlate the mud and the muck with the matrix. And we are the seed. We are the lotus seed underneath. And we have to work our way through all of that stuff. And then we bloom. And we bloom through truth. And we bloom through love and compassion, kindness, and true unity. Experiment with different ways to customize your spiritual practice. Meditation is a bit daunting for some. In our own experience, we've seen many, most of the collective have some fairy lineage. Yes, that's a real thing. And it's mislabeled as ADHD, anxiousness, nervous disorder, uh, multiple personalities even. There are some true mental health issues, but by and large, these labels that get put on the beings that have a lot of fairy in them are very unfair and they're made to keep them in a fear state to make them feel sick and and that they don't fit in when in reality you just have to recognize them for what they are and they are excitable difficult to focus extremely loving and compassionate empathic souls so they are very wounded they have been very very wounded so that's why I went to source and said, so much of the crew are fairy lineage and they cannot meditate. They, they just cannot turn their mind off of all the madness for five minutes to focus enough to met, to meditate. And the answer I received was let them do what makes them happy when they lose track of time that they are meditating and they are generating a connection with the divine that is beautiful. And that is their meditation. So it doesn't have to be what others think it needs to be for you. You can definitely customize this for your journey. The challenge with the seventh ray is to not become obsessed with the future. I am completely guilty of that. With the new and to the extent that you forget about the valuable aspects of what already is in the here and the now. That was a big um, a big LFG for me. It took me a long time to get there. Because I was really thrust into my mission uh, with information about the prophecy, with information about what was expected to happen at the time, two years from then, which are things that are happening now, by the way. And it was a lot. It was a lot for me to comprehend and process and digest and integrate. But I couldn't keep myself from going down that road, down a little bit too far ahead. I had to keep reeling myself back in. That was definitely a journey for me as well. The huge obstacle for humans is that we are all trained to chase the carrot at the end of the stick. We are well-trained lab rats, if you want to think about it. On earth school, they teach you that you always have to be going for the golden egg. You always have to be striving for the next title, the next promotion you're nothing if you are just you know happy where you are and of course it's inverted it's made to keep you so weak and spread out in your energy and focused on the wrong things that you miss the now you miss the blessings of the now you miss out on your children you miss out on spending time that would truly light your soul up because chasing the carrot on the stick doesn't actually do it does it At the end of the day, I have said this before, I have been in the honored and humbling position to hold hands with beings that are transitioning out of this dimension whenever they cross over. And out of the thousands 
over a 30 year career, not ever did one being say they wish that they worked more. No, that is not the regrets that they have at the end of their life stream. They say they were, they regret working so hard. They regret putting their family on the back burner and chasing that, that corporate ladder. That's what they regret. Don't, don't regret it. Make the changes now and see how your life flourishes. You will be rewarded. Finding the focus to remain in the here and now to co-create your heaven on earth is what we are called to do. That's one of the activations that we do with Green Tara. She helps you realize the blessings of the now and that you have the power to co-create and change things that don't excite you into things that do excite you. And it's totally free. It's about developing what has value, not rejecting outright anything from the past. The past can teach us wisdom and help us create a more loving future if we allow ourselves to balance our passion for the future with respect to what has been. That takes some work because we're just not wired that way. And then we're not, it's not fostered to do that. There's a strong push to leave all of our past there. However, to completely heal means you are no longer triggered. So incorporating lessons from the past events with your future endeavors gives us the balance of the now. The gift of the seventh ray is the ability to live as an embodied divine presence for humans, we don't trust or even recognize the love of the divine in our hearts yet, for some. The seventh ray empowers us to use loving ritual to invite the divine presence to fill us in our, in our lives. It also teaches us how to use our consciousness to clean up our own energy field and the energy field of the world around us so the divine can show its face more clearly. The comfort of this can help free all beings from the anguish of suffering. And my relative experience with all religions is that they want you to anchor in the suffering, right? They don't want, they, they, they motivate you through fear of suffering. It's completely man-made. Most of us suffer because of things we consent to. That's why we have to love and forgive and give gratitude to yourself when you do shadow work, because we have grown up in a society in a world that pushes us to consent to things that are actually harmful to us. We play a role in that. In order to heal from it, you have to recognize and forgive all parties involved, including yourself. This is the soul trap that man-made religion creates. The people who don't trust and they don't have faith in, in the divine unless it comes to them by way of the man that they trust that holds the book at the front of their congregation. Everything else is must be false. And they put such a fear in that. Well, they truly have no faith because that man can't create anything. It is the creator that they should have faith in and they don't. They're pushed away from that through fear, through suffering. True faith and sovereignty can draw out the authenticity of the soul, developing the unique direct relationships to the creator. When you're ready to accept the invocation of the seventh ray of ritual, order, and ceremony, say, I accept. Again, I will use my soul name and title. If you know your soul name, use it. If you know your title, use it. If you only have your earthly name, use it. Your energy signature is fully and completely yours and no one else's. I, Andalusia, Queen of Royal Orders and Spiritual Gifts, of my own free will, do now accept the blessing and grace of the seventh ray of ritual, order, and ceremony, and the assistance of the unconditionally loving masters of this ray, the violet flame of St. Germain and Archangel Zadkiel. I open to the magic of creativity, divine genius, and the absolute ability to translate spiritual concepts into real world experiences for the greater good. May I discover and use my innate power for conscious and loving ritual and ceremony to enrich and invite spiritual presence into the world 
And may all beings feel safe and consciously led in a loving divine order according to the great plan of love through my own free will. So be it. You know, St. Germain is my sole grandfather, one of them on my mother's side. And we use the violet flame quite often to clear things, to transmute things. Um, it's very healing. And so I invite you to engage with the violet flame and St. Germain for sure. I also invite you to stop by violetlotusenergy.com and schedule your QET session so that you can have these direct relationship experiences with Source Creator, Mother Sophia, the archangels I have introduced to you maybe for the first time or given you information about them that you never knew. I loved presenting this to you. There's some adjuncts that I think I'm going to add on. So it'll be probably a total of 10 videos in this series, but this was the end of the raise. And I thank you for tuning in. Stay safe out there. Take care.